Today, I'm going to show you three ways to use bias tape to bind your project edges or to make a neat hem on a garment. Bias tape is made using fabric cut on a 45 degree angle, giving it flexibility and making it a great option for rounding curves without wrinkles or bumps. Double fold bias tape is great for binding edges, while single fold is perfect for neatly finishing the hems on garments. It's my favorite way to finish a neckline. In this video, I'll show you how bias tape looks on a curve, how to miter corners when binding with bias tape, how to finish a neckline, and also, two ways to finish bias tape neatly where each end of your bias tape match up. First, let's talk about the basics of using bias tape to bind something like this little quilt. I've already stitched close to the edge of the quilt to keep the layers from wrinkling or becoming bunched up as I add the binding. Now, I'm gonna flip the quilt over so that I'm working on the underside. To begin, you'll open up the folds of the double fold bias tape and line up the edges of the tape with the edge of your quilt. You'll still be able to see the folds in the bias tape, which will be helpful for guiding you as you stitch. You will be stitching in the ditch right here at this top fold. You don't really need to pin this into place, but you can if that's your preference. I'm just gonna hold my tape into place as I guide it through my machine. For the finishing method I'm showing you with this piece, you'll wanna be sure to leave about a two inch tail at the beginning of your bias tape. When you get to your first corner, stop stitching before you get to the edge of the fabric. I'm stopping a half an inch from the edge because that's the seam allowance I'm working with as I'm stitching on the bias tape. Then lift the presser foot and pivot your fabric so that you're now stitching into the corner. See how the line goes out at an angle? That's what you want. Now flip the bias tape up with its fold matching that angled line that you just stitched and then fold it back down over top of itself, keeping your new fold line across the top edge of your quilt. Now begin stitching again, starting down from the edge with the same seam allowance and continue stitching in the ditch until you get to a corner again and just repeat the same process. When you reach the point where you began, stop stitching about an inch or two away from your beginning stitches. Leave another two inch tail and trim off the extra bias tape. I got lucky here and didn't really have any extra that I needed to trim off. Now, find where you want the seam to be where your bias tape meet, and I do this by folding back the bias tape and pinning it into place temporarily like this. Then I mark the points where they meet by making tiny snips in the folds. Now, I remove the pins and match up the snipped points, pinning along that line to make sure I'm stitching in the correct spot. Then I bring it over to the machine and stitch along that line. After trimming off the excess, I finish stitching the bias tape onto the quilt. After the last couple of inches of bias tape are stitched into place, it's time to fold the tape over the edge of the quilt. I'm gonna flip the quilt over and work on the right side. To handle the corners, you will just easily fold the corners into a miter as you get to that point while you're sewing along the edge. I'm top stitching my bias tape into place but if you want a super clean look, you can do a slip stitch to finish it off. Now my top stitching is complete and you can see how neat this seam is right here where each end of my bias tape matched up. You can barely even tell there's a seam at all. So neat and so nice. Next, I will show you a little less of a fiddly way to handle where these ends meet up, but it won't look quite as nice as this. For this little sample, I'm gonna show you how easily bias tape wraps around curves. For the beginning of this bias tape, rather than leaving a tail as I did on my previous sample, I'm just gonna fold back the end like this and begin stitching right on top of that fold. This time I'm using pins to get me started, but after I get started, I'm going to simply hold the bias tape into place as I guide it into the machine. When you get to the curved area, just gently guide the bias tape along the shape of the curve without stretching or pulling the bias tape. If you stretch or pull it, you will end up getting wrinkles and some wonkiness in your finished edge. When you get back to where you started, simply let the trimmed end overlap where you started and just continue stitching in the ditch to finish it up. 
Now I'm gonna fold my bias tape over to the front side of my quilt, just like I did last time, and I'm gonna top stitch it into place. Now that I'm finished, you can see that it looks pretty good, but you can definitely see here where my bias tape ends meet. You can choose to hand slip stitch the opening here if it bothers you, or you can just use the previous joining method that I shared. Next, let's talk about how to use bias tape to create a clean hemline on a neckline or an arm opening. My neckline already has stay stitching that I did a quarter of an inch from the edge, and I'm using the stay stitching to keep the neckline from stretching out as I add the bias tape, but also it acts as a guide for placing the fold of my bias tape. I'm using double fold bias tape for this. Narrow double fold tape is going to be a little tricky, but I'm just gonna go for it. If you're a beginner, using half inch double fold bias tape or something wider will be much easier to get even stitching and a clean look. You can pin the tape into place or clip it into place, or you can position it as you go along. You will be stitching in the ditch here right along the fold, so make sure that the fold is covering your stay stitching line, otherwise you'll see it later. Keep the finishing method that you choose to use in mind as you begin. You can decide which of the two methods I shared works for you, but I'm gonna fold down this edge here to begin with and then overlap it when I'm finishing. After stitching the bias tape into place, you're gonna open up the folds and you're gonna wrap them around the raw edge of your neckline, encompassing that raw edge. Then you're gonna fold it under again, and then this is gonna be on the inside of your garment, so you can pin this or clip this into place, and we're gonna stitch right along that folded under edge, just on the very edge, so you're only barely catching it with your stitches. This is where we are going to be baste stitching the bias tape into place. So you're gonna use a wider stitch for this with contrasting thread, because we're gonna remove this stitch later. So I'm gonna be taking this to my machine and base stitching and removing the clips as I go. So after my base stitching is complete, you'll flip the garment right side out, and then you can see here where my base stitch lines are. I'm going to top stitch with a coordinating thread just right across the top of that basting stitch line. So I finished top stitching and now I just need to use a seam ripper to remove the white basting stitches here. After removing the baste stitching, I just need to press the neckline and it is all finished. Now you know how to use bias tape to finish curved edges, how to handle your corners using bias tape, and also how to finish a neckline. 